Well, little did I know that uh, meeting Lee Craigie in uh, uh, Font Rameau in 20, 2016 in the summer when I was with Karen Dark training for the uh, Paralympic, um, well, she was training for the Paralympics in Rio where she eventually won a gold medal. Anyway, that, that's an aside, that's a side story, maybe for another video. Anyway, so uh, Karen, um, Karen was friends with Lee. Lee had been to the Commonwealth Games in 2014, but her love is endurance, endurance cycling, endurance mountain biking. And uh, so uh, Lee and I got chatting and she was running a group called the Adventure Syndicate that, um, that is, it's not really specifically for women, but it's certainly to encourage women to do uh, get involved in sport and try some ad adventures. And we decided to run this endurance camp in Girona in January 2017. Jenny Graham came along and um, I, I did some coaching with people. Thought we had one-to-one -one sessions where we discussed how they could achieve their goals. And Jenny's goals were the Arizona 750 and the Highland Trail 500, not in that order, but that were, they were her goals for 2017. And um, and I offered to coach five people at that camp for, for a year because I felt that they could benefit from having a, a professional coach, uh, although they didn't have much money, but the ethos of the Adventure Syndicate camp was to support people and uh, people could get bursaries to go to the camp even if they couldn't really afford it financially. So that we, it followed along from there and it worked quite nicely and I, I sort of liked liked the people that I offered to coach. Obviously these things don't work if you don't get on. And one of those people was Jenny. Anyway, Jenny decided that um, she was going to, she wanted to make the most of this uh, year of coaching and decided that she was going to break the round the world cycling record, be the fastest female to cycle around the world. And, and I was quite a surprise when she phoned me up and said, this is what I uh, want to do. And uh, so we had a chat about it. And obviously I'm always, I'm always really open-minded and look forward to uh, these sort of, you know, people's enthusiasm and uh, want to help people achieve their goals. So we talked about the logistics. I sort of asked her some specific questions about how she's going to do it, how, how much she had to do each day. And it, it became apparent that it was certainly possible to do and she had a very good chance of doing it. So um, so that, that was that, that was set in stone to uh, to go for it. And, uh, and it worked out, she broke the record, she's now in the Guinness Book of World Records and she's got a career in cycling which she wanted and she's uh, having a great time with GCN as a presenter. And I thought it'd be really good to perhaps spend a bit of time talking about what she did in, in, in the hope that you can realise that the, these to, that doing something that you dream about doing, even though it might seem impossible, you know, it could well be possible for you. Because Jenny didn't do any really special training. She just built up her fitness over time. And she set these, she had certain stepping stones. So... If you want to do an ultra endurance type event, you, um, if you think about it, you know, it's, you can't really do the ultra endurance event in training, but you can do endurance events or practice events to make stepping stones to build your fitness. So in a conventional sense, so all thinking about Karen Dark, I mentioned earlier, who coached for the Paralympics. Well, she was racing for 20 minutes or, or at most 90 minutes in the road race. So you, you, you're not training to build up your ability to go for a long time. You're training your ability to go fast. So you can do events very similar to your goal event in training. And, uh, and it doesn't take long to recover from that. Like, I mean, if, even if you did a 90 minute road race in cycling, you can recover from that in a in a few days but if you were to do um, 16 hours a day for three days in a row so just a long weekend it would take you you know it might take you a week or two to recover from that so if you did that every week uh, sorry every week or every two weeks you, you can imagine all you're doing is these long rides recovering and then doing another long ride and you're not really getting any faster your fitness isn't progressing very effectively so um, so the way to do it is to train fairly conventionally, improve your ability to ride faster for a long time, 
And then, which you obviously know from, my, that's my philosophy from other videos you've watched, and have these stepping stone events where you, where you practice your systems, practice, work out how long you can ride for, how long you have to sleep for, and, and learn about how to be self-sufficient on the bike. Jenny had these, um, already had some events planned for 2017, and then we added some more into the plan, or, or largely she found events that she found exciting and inspiring, and, and, she, and, and we put them in the plan. And that's the way I like to work. I like to work, if, you, if you've got things you want to do, well, sorry, if I worked with you, and you know, if I was your coach, and you had things you wanted to do along the way, then we'd discuss how how they might fit into your plan for the um, for your goal event for your overall goal. So Jenny's stepping stone events along the way to the uh, round the world record were sorry I've got a bit paper you can't see it's out of shot um, were the Highland Trail five hundred in twenty seventeen Arizona seven fifty also in twenty seventeen through the. Uh, which involved carrying the bike through the Grand Canyon, so that had some special features that weren't relevant to around the world, but uh, uh, certainly created a, a nice adventure. And then in uh, 2018, to avoid getting too drunk and ho hungover, she decided to ride Land Centre John O'Groats uh, over New Year, which I, uh, was pretty bad weather. It was a really bad weather that, week, that, that year over New Year, so that was a, a big challenge. But it was certainly... You know, it, uh, it's important to develop that mental toughness and the physical toughness to ride long, long distances. Um, we then had the camp in Girona, the second one, the 2018 camp, uh, which Jenny was at. And then the Strathpuffer, she did that, she does that most years, which is a 24-hour a mountain bike race in um, uh, in Strathpeffer, actually, in, 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 I think it's in Aberdeenshire, it's, uh, or Inverness, Inverness, it's near Inverness anyway, so it's not in Aberdeenshire, in Scotland. So they're all in January. Um, and then the Adventure Syndicate had their annual Match the Miles type ride, so they did the Southbound, which was from uh, Scotland down to here in, in France, where I live, and they came and stayed at our house for a few days and Jenny stayed a few days extra and that, that's when we worked on the route. So uh, we, we had then had all the route planned, we had backup copies of the of the route on Strava and she had uh, a GPS copies of each. Well, <coughs> we didn't do it, in, we didn't split it into days because it's always better to ride on a, a time schedule rather than ride on a, a mileage schedule because if something goes wrong then uh, you, you, your whole schedule's out if you're on a mileage schedule because you'll miss your target for the day and then the next day is not right. So, But if you ride on a, a duration, you know, ride to a certain time, then, uh, excuse me, then you can, um, then if something goes wrong, you can easily get back on schedule. So it was just split up, split up into blocks. In fact, it was we based it very much on Mark Beaumont's um, route because he'd done the around the world in 80 days the year before and that was all on Strava so, and he was quite happy for us to use that and he'd done years of research to prepare for it so it seemed silly to ignore that information and he was actually quite helpful in, in letting us do that so that was all there the route was all there all backed up she could get it off the internet if she needed it and uh, and then we, we were then it was then just to training to, to just <laughs> the training to be able to do it she didn't have really have any other events. I think she did. Uh, there was a there was a twenty four hour event in the Cairngorms, and I think she finished first overall in that. So obviously she was pretty fit. You know that, that was out of men and women. And then uh, and then the, then she did the event. So I, I have got some of her training on um, on my computer. So we can have a, a quick look at that. It's not it's not all there because. Um, some of the big rides she did without a power meter or heart rate monitor, because some people find the heart rate monitor distracting. And um, and if they were mountain bike rides, she rides with flat pedals, and, and she was using power pedals on a on a road bike for the majority of training. So it, it was it wasn't even actually that she had all the gadgets to train for it. We used what information we could, communicated regularly, talked once a month. And in that way, we, we, we sort of interactively, <laughs> interactively developed the training. Anyway, so I'll just have it. We can have a look, quick look at that, if you like. 
I don't know if the data are in training peaks um, anymore for one reason or another, but I have kept it's all in what's the tool, the analysis tool that I use called WK05. And you can see here, this is the what's known as the, um, it gives you the what's known as the chronic training load um, based on training stress score per day. So this is the training that she did in the um, in the period that I worked with her, 2017 to June 2000, July 2018. And um, you, you can see, I mean, the, the actual event isn't on there because uh, she didn't ride with a power meter because we weren't sure if the power pedals would be robust enough uh, to take it and she didn't want any added complication or added things that could go wrong. So if we just look at 2018, which is the year that she did the uh, record, then you can see that a training isn't if you look at the training stress score per day which is up in the blue up here there see you can see that um, it's um, only only just goes over 100 uh, for a brief period and that was in a, that was in a, a period of a, some sort of event which i think that 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 in april was the match the miles the southbound event that um, that the adventure syndicate did so she did a lot of riding in a few days and that built up her fatigue but also built up this training stress score so a training stress score of 100 is not outstandingly high and her average training stress score was about 80. 70 or 80 is the level that most people that, that i coach that work full time um would, would work to if they're training maybe six days a week so that's you know and, and, you've got, and most people can achieve that and um, and if you add in these stepping stones along the way that we talked about then then you, you can develop the physical fitness and the, and by practicing the stepping stone events you can develop the mental skills and the uh, toughness and be able to do the logistics so really what i wanted to say is just like this is using jenny as an example it's been an amazing experience for me and hopefully for her and um so, but you can do something similar. So go out and find your adventure and if I can help, let me know.